Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about how to implement a relatively simple pause menu as well as um, some features for turning the sound on and off so that you can have your users know how to do that and have it remember it from session to session. First though, uh, there's a couple things we need to address. Uh, if you want to go into your scripts folder, base game scripts, and then open up the board script, um, there's a few changes we need to make left over from last time. So I'm going to let this open and I will meet you back here once it's up. Okay, so we're in the board class and the two methods I want to take a look at really quickly are bomb row and bomb column. So uh, shout out again to Richard who pointed this out on one of the previous videos I put up, I think it was 52.1, that there's a little bit of an issue with my logic in here. So let's take a look. So in bomb row, um, even though I passed it which row to go for, for some reason I'm iterating over all the rows, which I shouldn't be. So we want to have the first for loop, uh, I, I equals zero, I is less than width, I plus plus, but we don't need this second for loop. So I'm going to get rid of the line with that for in j equals zero. Um, the next line that has the brace, and I'm going to get rid of the matching brace to that one. And then I'm going to unindent all this stuff. All right. And uh, the reason we don't have to do that is we don't need to iterate over every row. Instead of passing this J, we can just pass it row. I don't know why I didn't think about that. That's really dumb on my part. Um, but again, if I, I, I think it's good that I am not 100% polished on these because you get to see mistakes and maybe not think that I'm perfect because that's very far from true. Um, so I need to do pretty much the same thing on bomb column. So I need to get rid of this second for statement and its matching brace. And then uh, take all of this and unindent it. So now, instead of it being ij, it's going to be, uh, yeah, column i, which is what I called it down here. So really, really quick fix there. All right. So back into Unity. All right, so I have a couple new pieces of art that I'll include a link to in the description. One is for a pause screen panel, and two of them are music on and off buttons, and one of them is an exit button. So I'm just gonna pull these directly into my UI file I have for my art. Um, so we've got pause screen, we've got music on, music off, and exit. Okay, so now that I have those in my screen here, uh, we're going to talk about exactly how I want to design this pause screen. And if you want to design it differently, that's 100% okay. This is just how I was thinking of doing it because it's similar to one of the Candy Crush sagas. I don't remember which one. Um, but so the way it works, I'll hit play here. Um, my little panel will slide down as soon as it catches up to me. There we go. We'll click OK. Panel goes away. Uh, we're going to put a button down here in the lower left corner for pause. And then when we hit pause, a very small panel is going to pop up that allows us to do only two things. The first is to turn the sounds on or off. And the second is to exit the screen. And then if we hit pause again, the panel goes away and the game resumes where it was. So, um... Yeah, let's get started on that. So what I want to do here is I want to look at the top UI. And then in the top UI, I'm going to turn off the fade panel for now. Because I don't want to have the fade panel kind of be in the way of me looking at where stuff needs to go. Um, so I'm going to take, I think I already had a pause button. Oh, it was a settings button, that's right. So I'm going to use this red settings button here. Um, with top UI selected, I'm going to right click, choose UI, and button. That makes a button in the middle of the screen. I'm going to move it down here. I'm going to set this to be, um, let's do 80 by 80. That's a pretty good size. Um, put it kind of in the corner of the screen. I'm going to reset the anchors to the lower left corner. And now I can adjust the position a bit better. I'm going to say I want it 64 pixels from the X and 64 pixels from Y. So it's down there nice in the corner. Um, 
I'm going to take away my text option here. So it's just that button. Choose the button and then drag the red settings onto the source image for the image. Now it looks like it's supposed to. However, if we turn the fade panel back on, you'll see that this is above that fade panel, which is probably not what we want. Um, when Unity draws the UI, it draws it from the top down, which means that anything that's lower in the UI hierarchy gets drawn in front of anything that's earlier, unless you play around with the um, uh, the sorting order. But I'm just going to do the simple way. Take this button and put it above the fade panel so that it doesn't appear here. Um, all right, and then I'm also going to rename this from button to settings button. All right, now I'm going to turn my fade panel back off so that I can look at some stuff here. I'm going to go to my top UI. I actually, let's do this from the setting button. So from the settings button, I'm going to right click, choose UI, and I'm going to choose an image. Now, an image and a panel in Unity are essentially the exact same thing. They're just containers for the most part. Uh, a button is just an image that has a button script on it. Um, and I'm just going to change the image here to be my pause screen. And I don't want it to be square like that. I want it to be kind of elongated. So I'm going to uh, manipulate this a little bit. I'm going to set the width to be, uh, let's do 128, and the height to be 224. There we go. And I'm going to set it so that its position X is at 0. No, that's a bit too close. Let's do 32. Too far. Let's do 16. There we go. And for now, I'm going to put its position Y up here somewhere. So let's put that X back at 16 like it was. And 188, let's make this 192 so that we're staying close to things that are divisible by 16 because I'm weird like that. Uh, okay, cool. And I'm going to rename this image to be pause screen. And I'm going to make two children of this. So UI button. And I'm going to change this one first, and I'm just going to duplicate it so I don't have to make the same changes twice. So I'm going to make this button, um, let's make it 80 by 80. It's maybe too big. No, that'll, that might be okay. Um, and let's get rid of the text. And let's anchor this to the top center of its container. Let's change this one to be um, music on. Doesn't look too bad. And then we'll call this sound button. And we'll duplicate this. I'm going to call this other one exit. And I'm going to drag the exit button down, but still keep it centered. And I'll anchor this one to bottom center. And then I'll change its image from music on to exit. All right, cool. That doesn't look too bad. Let's hit play just to see how it looks with our pieces and everything in the scene. So, okay, that's not too bad. Now we're gonna have this kind of slide up and then you can, you know, choose any of these buttons. Right now the buttons don't do anything. Um, so let's, let's fix that first. Let's make our panel kind of slide up into the scene. So I'm gonna choose my pause screen here. I'm gonna go to add component. I'm going to add an animator, and then I'm going to go to the animation window. Um, create a new animation, and I want to make sure I'm putting this where all my other animations go, so I'm not cluttering up my hierarchy or my my project stuff. So animation, animations, and yeah, this is good. So we'll call this um, pause slide in. And for pause slide in, we're going to start super, super low. Let's keep our X position at 16, though. The reason I want to go super low is if you have a different resolution, I don't want this showing up on the bottom of the screen. 
which happened with the, um, the fade panel. All right, so I'm gonna hit record. And in order to create a keyframe here, I'm just gonna change my position. So make it like 17 and negative 440. And that way it'll record the anchored position. I'll change it back. And then I want this animation to take about half a second. So I'm gonna to go to half a second, pull it all the way in where I wanted it, which was 16 on X and 192 on Y. And so then if we just scrub through the timeline, we can see it pop up. If you want this to be um, not quite so mechanical, you can go to the curves option here and you can modify the way the curves work. So you can see how the X position is changing. If I grab this handle here, I can make it bouncier. But, mm, I can even just add another. There we go. So now if I go to the dope sheet and see how there's a little bounce there. That's a little better, a little more lifelike. Okay, so I'm gonna go out of record here. Um, I'm going to take my pause screen. I'm going to set its position back to 16, 192. I'm going to create another animation, a new clip. I'm just going to call this pause screen idle. And for pause screen idle, go into record, position 16 on X, 192 on Y. And that's it. It's just going to loop that animation again and again and again. Now I'm going to set my animation window aside, go to my animator, um, entry, we go to slide in, from slide in, we go to pause screen idle. So we're just going to go directly to idle. Now you could make another one for slide out um, and have that be what happens when you um, either disable the pause button or click exit or something. I'm okay just doing this. Uh, all right, so let's go back to our game and I'm going to keep my fade panel off because I want to see this uh, slide in because it's going to automatically do that. But we'll change that in code. So if I hit play, I just want to watch the slide in animation. Oh, let's try that again. Do, do, do. Yeah, it wasn't too great to see. But all right. Um, so that's it for today. Um, tomorrow we're going to have another video to show you how to um, actually make all of these buttons work the way that they're supposed to. Um, if you want to leave any questions or comments down below, feel free. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day.